World Championship tonight. Please welcome Swerve Strickland. Congratulations on such an amazing match tonight. I mean, Zack Sabre Jr. was actually just out here talking about the amazing work that both you and Will Ospreay did earlier tonight. Uh, how are you feeling to be able to go out there and still have that championship uh, around your waist? Oh, man, it's, uh, it's humbling, but at the same time, it's like me proving everybody that I was right again. It's one of those things I gotta constantly go out there and fight for it every week, every day. It's like, that's what it's like this man once said, being um, part of AEW is it's constantly, you're always fighting, you're always defending. And I relate to that so much because I've been doing that all my whole career. People think I'm so, I'm, I'm good to a certain level or the expectations of me are always getting lower and lower until I like break through and then I gotta, they gotta create another ceiling. And so like, I feel like me and Will, we have this chip on our shoulder to just constantly prove why this place is special. And we are so like competitive in every aspect of this game. And that's why I've always respected them. You know, I still respect them all the way up into this match. Um, I have my methods, I get into people's heads and that's, that's kind of like my boxer mentality. I want to get in your head and I'll poke at every part of you until I get you where I need you to be. And that's what got me the win tonight. But definitely, I feel like I silence a lot of critics and I'm gonna to have to do more because there's gonna be more questions <laughs> coming up probably tomorrow and then by down the mic on Wednesday or by all in Wembley. Let's open up the floor to uh, media. Hey, Swerve, congratulations. Jeff from uh, Iron Philly, HTV Podcast. So, I kind of had a little moment there with Will after the match. Did it care to share what you said, or do you want to keep that between you and Will? Uh, I honestly just told him I love him, man. And he's the best in the world. He's one of the best talents I've ever seen. And it's going to be a long time till you find someone as special as him. Like, how he does it. And I can't wait to do it with him again someday. Tyler, good day, New York. Uh, last time you guys were in Long Island, uh, I asked you if you could pick anybody who you want to fight at Wembley, and you said that you still have your eyes on Brian Danielson. Now, with the Owen started, and knowing the winner goes to challenge you for the world title, are you still gunning for Danielson in Wembley? Um, I think he, he's at the position to gun for me now, especially after the, tonight. But I still want that win back so bad. That's someone. That's something that still irks me to this day that loss for Brian because he's someone I idolize and I look up to, especially coming from the Pacific Northwest. We both share the Seattle, Tacoma, like native background. And from his career for the last 10, 15 years, I've been watching and studying that man and getting in the ring with them, feeling how special he is. That's a win that I need to mark off of my, like, off my list. And I don't have a long list, really. It's, it's very small, but definitely, Brian Danson's at the top of it. Who else is on that list? <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. You know. Just checking. There's, there's, I've gotten the ring with them twice now. Uh-huh. Still, I, like I said, it's a small list. These are guys, once again, I respect and I look up to for a long time. But those are the guys I want to knock down for sure. Respectfully. <laughs> Other questions? Congratulations on retaining the championship. Carlos Montosa for Flex Sessions. We saw how immersed people were with this storyline. We saw how immersed you were with it, how immersed Will was with it too. How do you feel moving forward with different storylines like MJF, which is probably in a redemption path, going for the chip, uh, Daniel Garcia, which is probably the next superstar, how do you feel about it, and how do you think you can help out the division building storylines with that purpose? Get people involved and more excited when you guys come out there. 
Uh, for me, like my method is always to get as personal as possible. I like to get to the bone and really feel what people are fighting for, what means the most to them, um, which what's in your heart, and that's where like I feel like me and Hangman had that story that really propelled to something that not anybody expected. Not even me and him. Like I've never worked with a Hangman ever in my career, never really known him too much, but we got to the point of like, what is in our hearts? What what are we fighting for? What means something to you? And that's where we really get to the root of things and then it kind of branches out from there. So I feel, feel like with like a Daniel Garcia, we need to get to the root of what's driving him to be the next big star. MJF, he always has tons of layers that he pulls back year after year after year. And so now like, it's him finding a way to mature to the next stage of who MJF is now, because he's already had the championship. So now what means something to him now? And Will Ospreay, he's on the biggest tear of anybody in AEW, really. And now he's gotten knocked down a peg. Who is he now? Who's, who is he? What, where's, what is, what's his motive? What is he going to try to do to get back to here? Or get back to, like, you know, where, where is he going to fall in line now in the company? There's a lot of big questions and a lot of characteristics with these people that we're really going to have to, like, really sit back and watch really closely. Not just on Dynamite, but watch it on Rampage, watch it on Collision, watch it on everything. You know, the weigh-in happened on Collision and it got a lot of people, like, really wondering and really questioning how tonight was going to turn out. And that's because we really get to the root of who we are as people, and then we become performers. And that's how I see the landscape of the next generation of pro wrestlers in AEW becoming the next main eventers and the stars of tomorrow and today. Uh, Corey Lieb with the Wrestling Observer. This is actually a question I've asked a couple times uh, when I've spoken to you. Um, Jim Jones. Yeah. Let's talk about it. How did that come come about? And then the other question I actually have for you is, this was the first pay-per-view that you actually main evented. It was a triple main event in, with Double or Nothing. The, main, the final match was the Anarchy and Arena, but this was the, 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 the main event um, that did 10,000 people at the show. And over 11. Over 11 and Million Dollar Gate, correct? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk a little bit about how you feel about that, that, that now you're kind of in your, was this now third month as champion, mm -hmm. and you've now headlined uh, over eleven thousand seat arena plus a million dollar gate. Yeah, and just talk about it. Well, like coming from Dynasty, it was like main eventing there. That was like when I won the championship it was my main event against Samoa Joe, and that meant something to me too, and that meant something to this company. And that's something that's going to stand out for the test of time. It's huge for like like a, not just I feel like an AEW but in wrestling. Jim Jones came through because of my man um, Albert Gentili over there. He's has he's been a huge part of like the transition to becoming like a true mogul in this industry. You know, like he was responsible for the Kevin Gates with um, in the tag championship celebration. He was responsible for Rick Ross coming through. He's been responsible for Fabulous coming through. He's been responsible for like um, uh, man, so many other things. Like even outside of this this, like the interviews I've been doing, like the media, Hot 97 and all these other things. There's a lot of motion with that guy. Um, Flash Garments, once again, responsible for a lot of these connections and how it's being presented on on stage and on like uh, how I'm gonna look, what I'm gonna wear, how I'm gonna say it, what's gonna be the, the selling point of things. It's like everything's like very meticulous and very, everything's pointed in the right direction. My man Guy, training my like, choreography and like fight choreography and my, and my reflexes and like getting my skills sharp, sharper than they've ever been before at my age, you know? So like, it's just like a team of guys that are just always working together to present what Swerve is. It's like, Swerve is just more than just me. It's it's everybody, not out over here, it's part of Swerve. You know, heck, over there, part of Swerve. Fitted, over part of Swerve. All my guys, all my peoples, it's all Swerve. Um, so Jim Jones came out. It was just like that was that's the culture in the main event of a you know eleven thousand seats so uh, main event in Long Island, and it's just, it's just always about presenting the culture in a way that's authentic to myself 
and authentic to the fans. It's not pandering, it's just like, oh man, okay, yeah, we're, we're in, we locked in. And it's just something like, I, I do a lot of like stuff that I used to watch as, like, as a child, as a kid, and all these things. I'm like, man, how do I, how do I bring this to light? And I have a team of people to take that vision and bring it to a light professionally and um, just in a, in a, once again, strategic, authentic. And I have this man right here that lays out the platform and is like, here, do it. So it's like I said, it's a teamwork. It's not just swerve, it's like the team swerve, you know what I mean? One more question for swerve. Hey, it's Adrian Hernandez with Unlikely. Bringing out someone from Dipset in New York was crazy. Um, I know for a lot of fans, it meant a lot that know the history that you have, the history that you have with Will, the yes. rooms that you guys have wrestled to now be on this stage. I know a lot of questions about what's going on in the future, but this match was so great. I want to know, did it meet your expectations and what you thought it would be? Um, I, I feel like a lot of the ways it exceeded, but just because the people, to me, like, that my expectations are always low until the people really bring it to like, oh man, okay, this is bigger than I thought it was. And I think it's the people and the fans that make it feel like a bigger deal and bring it up to different heights. And that's like, that's what is so, like we, like this time I'm like, oh, hopefully they're here for that. Hopefully, hopefully they gravitate to Jim. Hopefully they did, like you're just hoping because the, the, the car is so long and it's so talented. And hopefully they give you, like, they still got that energy left for you at the end. And thank God they did. They were invested. They didn't know which way it could go. And the competition is so stiff because it could go either way. And you're just fighting and scratching and clawing all the hard work you're putting in for the week and the month to get to this point everybody's invested in. So, like, whatever criticisms are out there doesn't matter because the people that are here watching, and are in there experiencing it, that's what matters. And that's what makes people at home feel like, man, I should have been there. The next one, I gotta be in there. And we gotta watch Swerve. We gotta, now I'm riding, I'm locked in with Swerve as a world champion. And at Will, I'm still locked in with him. And then you go like, man, where where's everybody go now? Where's like, like once again, it's like, so it, it just see, the, the other thing is the fans that make me exceed the expectations that I, that I put on myself for things, you know. Um, but it's also gratifying that there's a, a black world champion in the main events of these things. Like we really didn't, like, it's really tough to really um, see this style and this like, this stiff competition and like this, this, this level that we're at and see a black man holding this and being the face of that. It's really rare, and I'm really, I don't take it for granted, and I don't pander. I'm just really fortunate. I'm, I'm happy, and I'm ready to keep working. Thank you. Swerve Strictly, congratulations. There you go. Still holding on to that world title. That was great.